Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. We have found so much freedom and truth and the true gospel, the full gospel. Andrew makes it so easy to understand and to grasp. This constant revelation all the time it doesn't stop. It is amazing. It is amazing. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm going to start a brand new series teaching on the true nature of God. You know, this is one of the most foundational things that I teach. I actually have caught, referred to this before as Christianity 101. This is foundational, it's basic, and yet it's been a number of years since I've taught this on our TV program. And as I was going back and looking at things that I'd taught, I thought, man, I need to teach this again because we, you know, we've had, I forget the exact number, but it's over 80,000, I think up to 100,000 new contacts each year for the last few years. So we've got probably a quarter of a million people who have contacted me since I've taught this. And again, this is just foundational. We also have this teaching in Spanish, and then we have CDs and DVDs that were taken from my television broadcast. But did you know that understanding the true nature of God is just foundational to having a relationship with Him? You can't have a good, positive relationship with a person that you don't understand or that has been misunderstood. And I really believe that God is the most misrepresented and mischaracterized um, uh, being in the entire universe. God has had a lot of things ascribed to Him that is absolutely untrue. And sad to say, a lot of this comes from religion. And so if you have been in religion, I guarantee you there are probably concepts about God that hinder you from receiving from Him. If you don't understand a person, then you're susceptible to lies. You know, I know my wife. We've been married this year. We will have been married for 50 years. And I can truthfully say that I know my wife. And if you were to come to me and if you were to say something about her, just an out and out blatant lie, and you misrepresented her, you know, I would know whether that was true or not just because I know what Jamie is capable of. I know who she is. I know how she acts. I know the way that she uh, does everything. And so you wouldn't be able to lie to me about her because I know her. But there are a lot of people that honestly, they have a concept that God exists, but they don't understand His true nature and character. And because of that, they are susceptible to Satan lying about Him. You know, it says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, it says that in Christ, neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Now, I'll probably be referring to this again as we get further into this teaching and talk about the law and how that the law gave a misrepresentation. It wasn't inaccurate, but it was misinterpreted and people got a wrong concept of God. And that's what the first part of that verse is talking about, circumcision and uncircumcision. But in the New Covenant, it says faith works by love. If you don't understand that God is love, 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 and 16 says that. If you don't really understand God's love for you, then your faith is going to be hindered in working. And I tell you, I've, I've seen this in my own life. I've seen it in the lives of many, many people that I minister to that when they begin to really understand the goodness and the grace of God, that faith just goes through the roof. But did you know, if you've been taught that God is this harsh, mean, angry God, it's going to hinder the way that you receive. Not that you doubt that He exists, not that you doubt that He has power to do whatever, but you will doubt His willingness to use His power on your behalf if you've been taught that God is this harsh, mean, punishing God that imputes our sin unto us, and that holds us accountable. Uh, you will doubt that God will use His power on your behalf because your own heart will condemn you and show you that you're wrong. You need to understand the way that God has dealt with our sins, how He's placed all of our sins upon Jesus, and now God is not mad at you. He's not even in a bad mood. God loves you unconditionally. And if you could ever really get a revelation of that, faith would work by love. 
AND I GUARANTEE YOU, YOUR FAITH WOULD BEGIN TO WORK. LET ME USE THIS PASSAGE OVER HERE IN 2 PETER, CHAPTER 1, AND IN VERSE 2, IT SAYS, GRACE AND PEACE BE MULTIPLIED UNTO YOU THROUGH THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD AND OF JESUS OUR LORD. DID YOU KNOW THAT THERE ARE MULTITUDES OF CHRISTIANS THAT ARE PRAYING FOR GRACE AND PEACE? BUT THEY'RE JUST ASKING FOR IT, WAITING ON GOD TO JUST DROP IT ON THEM. THIS SAYS GRACE AND PEACE IS MULTIPLIED UNTO YOU THROUGH THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD AND OF JESUS OUR LORD. KNOWLEDGE IS WHERE GRACE AND PEACE COMES FROM. WHAT YOU DON'T KNOW IS HINDERING YOU. IT'S ACTUALLY HURTING YOU. THERE'S A SAYING THAT WHAT YOU DON'T KNOW WON'T HURT YOU, BUT THAT'S ABSOLUTELY UNTRUE. WHAT YOU DON'T KNOW IS DESTROYING YOU. AND GRACE AND PEACE IS LINKED TO YOUR KNOWLEDGE OF GOD. IT GOES ON TO SAY IN THE NEXT VERSE, ACCORDING AS HIS DIVINE POWER HATH GIVEN UNTO US ALL THINGS THAT PERTAIN UNTO LIFE AND GODLINESS THROUGH THE KNOWLEDGE OF HIM THAT HATH CALLED US TO GLORY AND VIRTUE. NOTICE IT SAYS THAT HIS DIVINE POWER HATH GIVEN UNTO US ALL THINGS. NOT SOME THINGS, MOST THINGS, MANY THINGS. IT SAYS ALL THINGS COME THROUGH THE KNOWLEDGE OF HIM. IF YOU DON'T HAVE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD AND WHO HE IS, HIS COVENANTS, THEN YOU AREN'T GOING TO BE ABLE TO RECEIVE FROM HIM. THE NEXT VERSE GOES ON TO SAY, WHEREBY, TALKING ABOUT THIS KNOWLEDGE OF GOD, ARE GIVEN UNTO US EXCEEDING GREAT AND PRECIOUS PROMISES THAT BY THESE YOU MIGHT BE PARTAKERS OF THE DIVINE NATURE, HAVING ESCAPED THE CORRUPTION THAT IS IN THE WORLD THROUGH LUST. SO THIS SAYS THAT THIS KNOWLEDGE IS THE ONE THAT GAVE US THESE DIVINE PROMISES. THE the WORD OF GOD CAME THROUGH THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD. THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD GAVE US THE WORD OF GOD. THE WORD OF GOD CONTAINS THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD, AND IT'S THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD THAT MAKES EVERYTHING, ALL THINGS, AVAILABLE UNTO YOU. IF YOU HAVE A WRONG CONCEPT, A WRONG UNDERSTANDING ABOUT WHO GOD IS AND HOW HE RELATES TO US AND HOW HE DEALS WITH US, IT'S GOING TO HINDER YOU RECEIVING FROM HIM. YOU KNOW, I REMEMBER AN INSTANCE ONE TIME WHERE A MAN BROUGHT HIS DAUGHTER AND THIS this GIRL WAS 12 YEARS OLD. SHE WAS IN A WHEELCHAIR. SHE WAS QUADRIPLEGIC. SHE WAS IN A VEGETATIVE STATE. THE LIGHTS WERE ON, BUT NOBODY WAS HOME. SHE COULDN'T TALK. SHE COULDN'T CONTROL HERSELF. THEY HAD TO CHANGE HER DIAPERS. 12 YEARS OLD, AND SHE WAS IN THIS VEGETATIVE STATE. SHE WAS ALIVE, BUT NOT FUNCTIONING. AND HE HEARD ME SAY THAT IT WAS GOD'S WILL TO HEAL EVERY SINGLE PERSON EVERY SINGLE TIME. AND HE GOT OFFENDED AT THAT BECAUSE THE WAY HE HAD COPED AND DEALT WITH THIS SITUATION IS TO THINK THAT GOD DID THIS. GOD MADE HIS DAUGHTER THAT WAY, THAT IT WAS GOD'S WILL. SHE WAS THAT WAY FROM BIRTH. AND THAT WAS THE WAY THAT HE COPED WITH IT, IS JUST TO THINK THAT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER IN GOD'S INFINITE WISDOM, THERE WAS SOME PURPOSE, SOME REDEMPTIVE PURPOSE TO HIS DAUGHTER SUFFERING. AND I TELL YOU, THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT THIS IS WHAT THEY BELIEVE ABOUT THE SOVEREIGNTY OF GOD. I'm, I'M FOR THE SOVEREIGNTY OF GOD IF YOU WILL DEFINE IT THE WAY THE BIBLE DEFINES IT. MATTER OF FACT, THE WORD SOVEREIGN ISN'T EVEN USED IN THE BIBLE. NOW, THE NIV CAME ALONG AND POPULARIZED IT. IT TOOK OVER 300 TIMES THAT GOD ALMIGHTY OR ALMIGHTY GOD WAS USED, AND THEY CHANGED THAT TO SOVEREIGN LORD. AND SO THE NIV POPULARIZED THIS TERM SOVEREIGN, BUT THE WORD SOVEREIGN ISN'T EVEN USED IN THE KING JAMES BIBLE. AND IF YOU USE SOVEREIGN THE WAY THAT IT'S DEFINED IN THE DICTIONARY WHERE IT MEANS FIRST IN RANK, ORDER, OR AUTHORITY, OR POWER, WELL, THEN I AGREE THAT GOD IS SOVEREIGN 100%. HE'S THE TOP OF THE FOOD CHAIN. NOBODY CAN TELL GOD WHAT TO DO. HE IS ABSOLUTE GOD ALMIGHTY. AND IF YOU WANT TO SAY THAT HE'S SOVEREIGN, AND IF THAT'S WHAT YOU MEAN, I'M WITH YOU 100%. BUT RELIGION HAS REDEFINED SOVEREIGN TO MEAN THAT IT... HE CONTROLS EVERYTHING THAT HAPPENS. AND THAT IS NOT TRUE. THAT IS NOT WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. THAT'S NOT EVEN A DEFINITION OF SOVEREIGN. MATTER OF FACT, IF YOU TALK ABOUT THE UNITED STATES BEING A SOVEREIGN NATION, YOU KNOW WHAT THAT MEANS IS THAT WE AREN'T RULED OVER BY ANOTHER NATION, BUT DOES THAT MEAN THAT WE HAVE NO LAWS AND THAT THE GOVERNMENT PEOPLE CAN DO WHATEVER THEY WANT TO? SAD TO SAY, I THINK THERE'S SOME PEOPLE IN GOVERNMENT THAT BELIEVE THAT AND THEY'RE JUST TRYING TO PASS THINGS THAT ARE COMPLETELY AGAINST OUR CONSTITUTION AND OUTSIDE OF THE RIGHTS THAT GOD uh, DELIVERED TO US, BUT 
technically speaking, the United States is a sovereign nation. We're independent. Nobody else controls us, but we have controls. We have laws that you have to abide by. And it's the same thing with God. God is absolutely uh, sovereign. He is almighty and in control in the sense that nobody can make Him do anything. But does that mean that He just does whatever He wants to and that He does these things? No. The Scripture puts limits on God. It says in Hebrews chapter 6 that God cannot lie. He cannot lie. It didn't just say He will not lie. He cannot lie. He cannot break His Word. God's Word is binding unto Him. Psalms 138 verse 2 says that He has magnified His Word above His name. At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess. But I guarantee you, His Word... A man is no better than His Word. IF YOU CAN'T KEEP YOUR WORD, WELL, THEN IT'S A REFLECTION ON YOUR CHARACTER. GOD'S WORD IS INFALLIBLE, AND HE WILL NEVER BREAK IT. SO WHEN HE SAID, YOU RESIST THE DEVIL, JAMES 4, 7, YOU RESIST THE DEVIL, THEN IF YOU DON'T RESIST THE DEVIL, IT'S NOT GOD WHO LETS THE DEVIL COME IN AND EAT YOUR LUNCH AND POP THE BAG. IT'S YOU. YOU DIDN'T TAKE YOUR AUTHORITY. YOU DIDN'T USE IT. IN JAMES CHAPTER 4, IT SAYS, WHENCE COME WARS AND FIGHTINGS AMONG YOU? COME THEY NOT HINTS OF YOUR OWN LUST THAT DWELL IN YOUR MEMBERS? YOU WAR AND FIGHT AND DESIRE TO HAVE, AND YET YOU HAVE NOT BECAUSE YOU ASK NOT. YOU ASK AND RECEIVE NOT BECAUSE YOU ASK AMISS THAT YOU MIGHT CONSUME IT UPON YOUR OWN LUST. THAT VERSE MAKES IT VERY CLEAR THAT WARS DO NOT COME FROM GOD. TURMOIL, FIGHTING DOES NOT COME FROM GOD. MATTER OF FACT, PROVERBS CHAPTER 13, VERSE 10 SAYS, ONLY BY PRIDE COMES CONTENTION. GOD IS NOT THE ONE WHO CAUSES CONTENTION. IT'S OUR OWN PRIDE. IT'S OUR OWN SELF-WILL THAT CAUSES THIS. SO FOR PEOPLE TO SAY THAT GOD IS JUST SOVEREIGN AND THAT HE CONTROLS EVERYTHING, LIKE THIS MAN SAYING THAT GOD MADE HIS DAUGHTER uh, A VEGETABLE AND THAT THIS WAS HIS WILL, I CAN UNDERSTAND WHY THAT'S ATTRACTIVE BECAUSE SOMETIMES WE JUST WANT TO PUT EVERYTHING IN A NICE LITTLE BOX AND WE WANT TO THINK WE GOT GOD COMPLETELY FIGURED OUT AND WHEN WE SEE SOMETHING THAT'S WRONG, LIKE A CHILD THAT'S BORN WITH SOME KIND OF A DEFORMITY OR A PERSON THAT WE'VE PRAYED FOR TO BE HEALED AND THEY WEREN'T HEALED AND THEY WENT AHEAD AND DIED, RATHER THAN SIT THERE AND ACCEPT RESPONSIBILITY THAT MAYBE THERE'S SOMETHING, SOME KNOWLEDGE ABOUT GOD THAT WE DON'T KNOW, THAT MAYBE SOMEBODY ELSE INTERFERED, MAYBE THE DEVIL STOLE AND BEAT US IN THIS AREA, RATHER THAN FACE ANY OF THESE THINGS WHICH ARE UNSETTLING AND THAT, uh, YOU KNOW, IT'S... it's, uh, MAN, I DON'T KNOW, I'M TRYING TO CHOOSE THE RIGHT WORD, BUT it's, IT'S NOT COMFORTING WHEN YOU SIT THERE AND SEE SOMETHING NEGATIVE AND THINK THAT THERE'S SOMETHING I COULD DO ABOUT THIS AND I HAVEN'T DONE IT. MAN, THAT COULD CAUSE TURMOIL IN PEOPLE. AND I UNDERSTAND WHY THEY'RE MOTIVATED TO SIT THERE AND SAY, WELL, GOD IS JUST SOVEREIGN. BUT THAT IS NOT TRUE. AND YOU KNOW, THIS MAN WHO BROUGHT HIS DAUGHTER IN THAT WHEELCHAIR, I STRIVED TO SHARE WITH HIM FROM SCRIPTURE THAT GOD IS NOT THE ONE WHO CAUSED THIS SICKNESS THAT IS GOD'S WILL, THAT HE'S HEALED US OF ALL OF OUR SICKNESSES AND ALL DISEASES, PSALMS 103. AND I SHARED SCRIPTURE WITH HIM, AND HE JUST WASN'T HAVING ANY OF IT. HE ARGUED BACK AND FORTH. SO THIS GIRL WAS IN THE WHEELCHAIR. I WAS IN FRONT OF THE WHEELCHAIR. HE WAS BEHIND IT, AND WE WERE GOING BACK AND FORTH OVER ALL OF THIS. AND ANYWAY, HE WAS MAD AT ME. HE WAS UPSET BECAUSE THIS WAS TAKING AWAY ALL OF HIS DEFENSES AND HOW HE HAD LEARNED TO COPE WITH THIS SITUATION. AND SO I HAD NOTHING TO LOSE. THE GUY WAS ALREADY MAD. AND UPSET. AND I JUST LOOKED AT HIM AND I SAID, WHAT KIND OF FATHER ARE YOU ANYWAY THAT WOULD WANT HIS DAUGHTER TO BE IN A WHEELCHAIR AND NOT EVEN CARE IF SHE'S, YOU KNOW, ABLE TO COMMUNICATE, CAN'T CONTROL HER BOWELS, YOU HAVE TO DO EVERYTHING FOR HER, YOU HAVE TO FEED HER. I SAID, WHAT KIND OF FATHER ARE YOU? BOY, THIS GUY, HE GOT REALLY HOT. I MEAN, IF if SHE HADN'T BEEN IN BETWEEN US IN THAT WHEELCHAIR, HE MIGHT HAVE PUNCHED ME. HE STARTED YELLING AT ME, HOW DARE YOU SAY THIS? HE SAYS, I LOVE MY DAUGHTER. I'D DO ANYTHING FOR MY DAUGHTER. HE SAYS, IF I COULD, I'D BE LIKE SHE IS SO THAT SHE COULD BE LIKE ME. AND AFTER HE SAID THAT, AND I SAID, YOU THINK GOD ALMIGHTY LOVES YOUR DAUGHTER LESS THAN YOU DO. NOW, SEE, HE COULD ARGUE DOCTRINE WITH ME, AND HE COULD SIT THERE AND SAY, OH, GOD CONTROLS EVERYTHING. BUT WHEN YOU BRING IT DOWN TO LOVE, THERE IS NO WAY THAT A FATHER WHO LOVED HIS DAUGHTER WOULD WANT HER TO BE IN THAT CONDITION. 
AND YET WE THINK THAT GOD ALMIGHTY, WHO THE BIBLE SAYS IN 1 JOHN, CHAPTER 4, VERSES 8 AND 16, IS LOVE. GOD IS LOVE. HE DOESN'T JUST HAVE LOVE. THIS IS WHO HE IS. AND WE THINK THAT GOD ALMIGHTY, WHO IS LOVE, LOVES PEOPLE SO MUCH THAT HE PUT A CANCER ON YOU TO TEACH YOU SOMETHING, THAT HE KILLED YOUR CHILD BECAUSE YOU HAD DONE SOMETHING WRONG. AND WE ATTRIBUTE THOSE KIND OF THINGS TO GOD. WHAT THAT DOES, THAT IMPUNES HIS CHARACTER. IT KEEPS YOU FROM BELIEVING. YOU MIGHT BELIEVE THAT HE HAS ALL POWER, BUT YOU DOUBT THAT HE WILL USE IT BECAUSE MAYBE HE'S WANTING YOU TO SUFFER TO TEACH YOU SOMETHING. SEE, THAT'S NOT GOD. SECOND PETER, CHAPTER 3, AND VERSE 8, IT SAYS, BUT BELOVED, BE NOT IGNORANT OF THIS ONE THING, THAT ONE DAY IS WITH THE LORD AS A THOUSAND YEARS, AND A THOUSAND YEARS IS ONE DAY. THE LORD IS NOT SLACK CONCERNING HIS PROMISE, AS SOME MEN COUNT SLACKNESS, BUT IS LONG SUFFERING TO US, WERE NOT WILLING THAT ANY SHOULD PERISH, BUT THAT ALL SHOULD COME TO REPENTANCE. I MEAN, YOU CAN'T MAKE IT ANY CLEARER THAN THIS RIGHT THERE. VERSE 9 SAYS, HE IS NOT WILLING THAT ANY PERISH. THIS IS GOD'S WILL THAT NO ONE PERISH. AND YET JESUS HIMSELF SAID THAT THERE'S GOING TO BE MORE PEOPLE ENTER BY THE BROAD GATE TO DESTRUCTION THAN THERE IS BY THE NARROW GATE UNTO EVERLASTING LIFE. HOW CAN YOU SIT THERE AND SAY THAT EVERYTHING THAT HAPPENS IS GOD'S WILL WHEN HE SAYS HE IS NOT WILLING THAT A SINGLE PERSON PERISH, AND YET MULTITUDES, MILLIONS, BILLIONS OF PEOPLE ARE PERISHING BECAUSE GOD DOES NOT FORCE HIS WILL UPON US. YOU CAN ALSO SEE THIS IN THE CHILDREN OF ISRAEL WHEN THEY CAME OUT OF THE LAND OF EGYPT. IT WASN'T GOD'S WILL FOR THEM TO SPEND 40 YEARS IN THE WILDERNESS, BUT THEY REBELLED AT GOD. THEY WANTED TO APPOINT A CAPTAIN AND RETURN BACK TO BONDAGE, AND THEY GRIPED AND COMPLAINED THE ENTIRE TIME. IT WAS JUDGMENT THAT GOD BROUGHT ON THEM, BUT THAT WAS NEVER GOD'S PERFECT WILL FOR THEM. YOU CANNOT LOOK AT SCRIPTURE AND SAY THAT ANYTHING THAT HAPPENS IS GOD'S WILL. PEOPLE WILL SIT THERE AND SAY, WELL, IN AN ELECTION, YOU KNOW, A PERSON COULDN'T BE ELECTED IF IT WASN'T GOD'S WILL BECAUSE GOD JUST CONTROLS ALL OF THESE THINGS. OVER IN, I BELIEVE, IT'S HOSEA, CHAPTER 8, VERSE 4, IT SAYS, BUT YOU'VE DONE IT NOT BY ME. YOU'VE ANOINTED PRINCES, AND I KNEW IT NOT. THAT RIGHT THERE IS GOD SPEAKING, AND HE SAID THAT THERE WERE PEOPLE PUT INTO POSITIONS OF AUTHORITY THAT HE DID NOT PUT THERE. TO THINK THAT WHOEVER GOD WILLS JUST AUTOMATICALLY GETS ELECTED AND IS IN CONTROL AND THAT GOD'S WILL IS AUTOMATICALLY DONE IS A LIE AND A DECEPTION. AND WHAT IT DOES, IT MAKES GOD APPEAR TO BE THIS EVIL, MEAN PERSON. YOU KNOW, WE JUST HAD ROE VERSUS WADE OVERTURNED BY THE U.S. SUPREME COURT, BUT FOR 49 YEARS, NEARLY 50 YEARS, ABORTION WAS ASCRIBED AS A CONSTITUTIONAL RIGHT. AND BECAUSE OF IT, THERE WAS OVER 63 MILLION UNBORN BABIES ABORTED. AND THERE'S PROBABLY MANY MORE THAN THAT BECAUSE NEW YORK AND CALIFORNIA WERE NOT REQUIRED TO LIST ALL OF THE ABORTIONS. IT'S PROBABLY OVER 70 MILLION. YOU KNOW, IF YOU LOOK AT IT WORLDWIDE, I THINK IT WAS IN 2020 OR 2021, IT WAS ACTUALLY LISTED THAT THERE WERE MORE PEOPLE ABORTED THAN THERE WERE BORN. THE NUMBER ONE CAUSE OF DEATH IN THE WORLD IN THE LAST FEW YEARS HAS BEEN ABORTION. THERE ARE MILLIONS, BILLIONS OF PEOPLE THAT HAVE BEEN MURDERED. ARE YOU SAYING THAT GOD IS THE ONE WHO CAUSED THAT? THAT THIS IS GOD'S WILL? AGAIN, YOU CAN LOOK IN EXODUS CHAPTER 1 AND YOU CAN SEE THAT PHARAOH COMMANDED ALL OF THE WOMEN TO KILL THEIR MALE CHILDREN. WAS THAT GOD THAT GAVE THAT COMMAND? AND WHEN THE MIDWIVES DID NOT COOPERATE WITH WHAT PHARAOH SAID AND THEY ALLOWED THE CHILDREN TO BE BORN, PHARAOH CAME AND SAYS, WHY AREN'T YOU DOING WHAT I TOLD YOU TO DO? AND THEY SAID, THE EGYPTIAN WOMEN ARE NOT LIKE THE JEWISH WOMEN. THE JEWISH WOMEN ARE LIVELY AND THEY DELIVER BEFORE THE MIDWIFE COMES IN. IN OTHER WORDS, THEY LIED ABOUT THIS, BUT THEY PROTECTED THOSE CHILDREN AND BECAUSE OF IT, GOD BLESSED THE MIDWIVES AND GAVE THEM THEIR OWN FAMILIES AND THEIR OWN CHILDREN ALSO. SO GOD PUT HIS BLESSING ON THAT. THAT SHOWS YOU THAT GOD WAS NOT THE ONE THAT WAS INTO THIS KILLING. I TELL YOU, IF YOU BELIEVE THAT GOD IS THE SOURCE OF ALL EVIL, ALL RAPE, ALL MURDER, ALL OF THE UNGODLINESS THAT'S BEING DONE, IF YOU BELIEVE THAT GOD IS IN CHARGE OF ALL OF THE WOKENESS AND THE REWRITING OF HISTORY AND ALL OF THESE KIND OF THINGS, THEN YOU HAVE A MISUNDERSTANDING ABOUT THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD, AND IT IS GOING TO AFFECT YOUR RELATIONSHIP WITH HIM. YOU NEED TO FIND OUT WHAT GOD 
IS REALLY LIKE. YOU KNOW, I ACTUALLY SAW A TELEVISION PROGRAM OF A PERSON WHO'S A FRIEND OF MINE. I MEAN, THIS TEACHING ON GOD CONTROLS EVERYTHING IS SO PERVASIVE THAT THERE'S PEOPLE THAT I LOVE AND HAVE a RELATIONSHIP WITH THAT STILL BELIEVE THIS, BUT IT'S STILL WRONG ACCORDING TO SCRIPTURE. BUT I SAW ON THIS MAN'S TELEVISION PROGRAM A WOMAN WHO, uh, HER AND HER DAUGHTER WERE ABDUCTED AT GUNPOINT, TAKEN OUT TO A REMOTE AREA. BOTH OF THEM WERE RAPED. THE MAN HAD THE WOMEN LAY ON THEIR FACE, AND THEN HE SHOT BOTH OF THEM IN THE BACK OF THE HEAD. THE DAUGHTER DIED. THE MOTHER SURVIVED. SHE HAD PHYSICAL PROBLEMS, BUT SHE DID SURVIVE. AND SHE WAS ON THIS PROGRAM SAYING THAT GOD ALLOWED THIS, THAT GOD CONTROLLED IT, THAT THERE WAS A REDEMPTIVE PURPOSE, AND SHE WAS TRYING TO MAKE IT LOOK LIKE THAT THIS WAS A BLESSING FROM GOD, THAT HER AND HER DAUGHTER WERE RAPED. THE DAUGHTER WAS MURDERED. SHE WAS uh, WOUNDED AND THINGS LIKE THIS. AND PEOPLE WERE ATTRIBUTING THIS TO THE SOVEREIGNTY OF GOD. THAT IS A LIE. THAT IS A MISREPRESENTATION. I, IN MY OPINION, WHICH IS THE ONLY OPINION THAT I HAVE, I BELIEVE THAT THIS EXTREME SOVEREIGNTY OF GOD TO WHERE GOD CONTROLS EVERYTHING, HE EITHER CAUSES IT OR PERMITS IT, IS THE MOST DAMNABLE HERESY IN THE BODY OF CHRIST. IT MAKES YOU PASSIVE. AGAIN, JAMES CHAPTER 4, VERSE 7 SAYS, SUBMIT YOURSELVES THEREFORE UNTO GOD. RESIST THE DEVIL, AND HE WILL FLEE FROM YOU. THAT SAYS SOME THINGS ARE FROM GOD. YOU SUBMIT TO THOSE. SOME THINGS ARE FROM THE DEVIL. YOU RESIST THOSE. IT DIDN'T SAY THAT EVERYTHING THAT HAPPENS IS ULTIMATELY FROM GOD. IF YOU BELIEVE THAT, WELL, THEN YOU SHOULDN'T RESIST ANYTHING. BECAUSE if, you, IF GOD IS ONE THAT'S ULTIMATELY IN CONTROL, WHETHER HE CAUSED IT OR ALLOWED IT, WELL, THEN YOU WOULD BE RESISTING GOD. IF YOU REALLY BELIEVE THAT GOD CONTROLS EVERY SINGLE THING THAT HAPPENS, THEN YOU SHOULDN'T GO TO THE DOCTOR, YOU SHOULDN'T TAKE MEDICINE, YOU SHOULDN'T GET SURGERY BECAUSE YOU'D BE FIGHTING AGAINST GOD. IF GOD'S THE ONE THAT PUT THAT SICKNESS ON YOU TO TEACH YOU SOMETHING OR TO PUNISH YOU, WELL, THEN WHY DON'T YOU LET IT JUST RUN ITS COURSE AND HAVE ITS FULL IMPACT IN YOUR LIFE? OF COURSE, ALL OF THOSE THINGS I'M SAYING ARE WRONG. WE SHOULD NOT BE SUBMITTING TO SICKNESS, BUT I'M SAYING THAT WOULD BE CONSISTENT IT'S HYPOCRITICAL FOR US TO SAY THAT EVERYTHING COMES FROM GOD AND THEN PRAY THAT HE WOULD CHANGE OUR SITUATION, CHANGE OUR BODY, CHANGE OUR FINANCES, HEAL THIS MARRIAGE, BECAUSE IF GOD CONTROLS EVERYTHING, WELL, THEN WHATEVER HAPPENS, okay, SERA, SERA, WHATEVER WILL BE, WILL BE. THAT IS JUST... FORGIVE ME FOR BEING BLUNT, BUT THAT IS DUMB TO THE SECOND POWER. THAT IS DUMB, DUMB. AND ONLY RELIGIOUS PEOPLE BELIEVE THAT. I TELL YOU, I'M COUNTERING THIS STUFF, AND I'M GOING TO BE SHARING WITH YOU WHAT THE TRUE NATURE AND CHARACTER OF GOD IS LIKE. AND IF YOU CAN GET THIS FIGURED OUT, I TELL YOU WHAT, IT WILL MAKE A DIFFERENCE IN YOUR RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. IT WILL OPEN YOU UP TO UNDERSTANDING THE GOODNESS OF GOD, AND YOU CAN TRUST HIM IN A WAY YOU NEVER COULD TRUST HIM IF YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THESE TRUTHS. SO AGAIN, I'VE GOT THIS BOOK ENTITLED, THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD. I'VE GOT IT IN ENGLISH, AND IN SPANISH, WE HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S ON THIS SUBJECT. AND I BELIEVE THAT THIS WOULD REALLY, REALLY MAKE A DIFFERENCE IN YOUR LIFE. SO PLEASE LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION. PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY TO REQUEST THE MATERIALS. AND JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW AS WE CONTINUE THIS SERIES ON THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD. ANDREW IS OFFERING HIS BOOKLET, THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD, AS HIS FREE GIFT TO YOU TODAY. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, The True Nature of God, is available in a CD or DVD album and as a book in either English or Spanish. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. 
While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of September, Andrew will be hosting Grace and Faith conferences via live stream to Hungary and to Australia. Also in September, Andrew will be in Woodland Park to host the Truth and Liberty Coalition Conference with guest speakers U.S. Representative Doug Lamborn, U.S. Representative Lauren Boebert, David Barton, Lance Walnow, Bill Federer, Mario Murillo, E.W. Jackson, Pastor Rob McCoy, Janet Porter, Richard Harris, Jason Yates, Eric Metaxas, and Mark Coward. Next, Andrew will be hosting the Grace Encounters Conference at the campus in Woodland Park with guest speaker Dwayne Sheriff. And in October, Andrew will be speaking in Colorado Springs. Next, join Andrew at the campus in Woodland Park for our annual Ministers Conference. Andrew will be joined by guest speakers Mario Murillo, Dwayne Sheriff, Bob Yandian, Billy Epperhart, Greg Moore, and Mike and Carrie Pickett. Then, Andrew will be speaking in the UK. Lastly, in October, Andrew will be in Walsall, England for the Andrew Womack Ministries European Ministers Conference with guest speakers Bob Yandian, Billy Epperhart, and Paul Milligan. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. You know, my whole ministry is just about encouraging people to take the seed of God's Word and let it work in your heart. And of course, we do that through television, through materials that we put out, but the greatest way we have of impacting anybody is our Caris Bible College. I tell you, it is discipleship on steroids. We see people come in one way and leave a different way. I promise you that this could change your life. So check out our Caris Bible College with many locations around the world. Visit discovercaris.com or call 719-635-1111 to find out more about the Caris experience. Caris Bible College, change your life, change the world. I wanna let you know that when you support Andrew Womack Ministries that we also support a lot of other ministries. We actually started the Springs Rescue Mission that is now the largest distributor of food and clothing and furniture in all of Colorado Springs. We've got ministries to orphans. We've got ministry to children that have been caught in the sex trade. Uh, we support uh, pregnancy centers have actually lowered the abortion rate in Colorado to one of the lowest in the nation. And there's just a lot of things we do. So when you support here, you are helping us reach people all over the world.